The sheer amount of debt right now in the US is astronomical. Since the financial crisis, we have added unprecedented levels of debt, further increasing risk levels. We were told that countries, governments, and people would have to be more conservative and begin easing off of their risk. That didn't happen, yet we are told it did every single day. I don't know about you, but I am not too fond of being lied to. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to talk about debt. We're going to talk about the job situation. I'm going to look at this from several angles. Let's begin by taking a look at this. Minnesota farm income hits historic low at the very bottom of the page. 2018 Minnesota farm income by the numbers. It lists a whole bunch of different things, but I wanted to just focus on the first one. Median net income is $26,000. You cannot support your family on $26,000. That is the median. Imagine how many people are making less than that. And this is hard work. I'm sure you know there are fewer and fewer people doing this for obvious reasons. It's not paying enough these days. Many people are moving into the cities. It's getting very expensive there. The jobs aren't keeping up as well. This is the real economy. This is what's been happening. Many people have been moving out of the rural areas into the big cities. They get to the big city and all of a sudden they don't have the right skills to be working in the city. Now their debt is accumulating as they try to pick up something to get any job they can. It's not what they wanted to. And of course, this happens to be an issue for so many people today. We have big agribusiness that exists and even those farms are not profitable anymore. They're only profitable for the institutions that are above them, not the individual farmer. So we've got more store closures to add to the list. Owner of K Zales and Jarrett expects to close more than 150 jewelry stores. There's more details about this, but I just wanted to show you that this continues over and over and over again. I had a video that said there would be 4,800 stores closing. Then the next week I checked, it was already over 5,000. Then I had to make an updated video just a couple weeks later that was at 5,600. We are seeing extreme levels of store closures today at a record pace. Many people believe that this is not a problem because other stores are opening up. And that is of course true there are always stores opening and closing but not at this record pace I replied to about 100 people with the exact same comment, which was basically suggesting that the rise of e-commerce and Amazon were the reason for the store closures, but I can tell you now that is not the case. Literally, statistically, in 2019, 11% of retail is e-commerce. That's it. So imagine while we have companies like Amazon that do contribute a lot to that percentage, it's still only 11%. Maybe the stats are skewed in one way or another, but it is not a a considerable portion of the total that is proven that is statistical you got to look into it for yourself on that video I showed the statistics and still I received about a hundred at least mentioning this either they didn't watch the video or quite frankly they're unwilling to admit the fact that the economy isn't doing well if you want to keep updated with the numbers you can see dailyjobcuts.com this was brought to me by a subscriber you can scroll through here and it will show you all of the different institutions and how many people they are laying off. I don't think it's going to cover everybody. I don't think that this is necessarily a be-all, end-all type of website, but it's a great resource to have, dailyjobcuts.com. Let's be honest, right now people are so heavily in debt, they've pushed themselves to the absolute maximum, but don't worry, because as long as they keep their job, and as long as their expenses stay the same, they won't have a problem for years until inflation eats away at that little bit of money that they have left. Well, that's a problem for so many people. Healthcare costs in the United States are generally measured as the highest in the world. Last year, many Americans could not afford their healthcare costs and so borrowed 88 billion dollars to pay for that portion they could not afford. Among the OECD countries, the United States had the highest health care costs in 2017. The total was $3.7 trillion nationwide, which translates into nearly $11,000 per person. 
Imagine people cannot afford their health care and so they have to go into debt in order to pay off these things. They can't necessarily just push it off in many cases, although some actually do, and I'll cover that more in a moment. Another major personal financial concern among Americans is that 45% worry that a major health care event would leave them bankrupt. Additionally, in the past year, 41% said that they did not visit an emergency room due to cost. You have to think about how serious this is. We're not talking about they don't have the ability to pay for their cell phone bill or maybe their new iPhone. They're going to have to delay that another year. We're talking about medical expenses and they didn't even go to the emergency room because it was going to cost too much. Hopefully people start to realize what has been happening. You know, everything seems totally fine when you still have your job, when you're still healthy enough to be working that job, when your income and your expenses are all staying the same and everything in your life is the same, well then of course you're not going to have an issue. You're not going to come up on any of these statistics. You're going to be able to pay all your bills and things look just fine. However, when one of those things is disrupted just a little bit, maybe you're sick for a couple months and that takes you off of your feet suddenly you can't pay the bills well what if one of your expenses starts to rise dramatically that could be anything related to health care issues maybe a couple appliances in your house broke maybe you got an issue with a family member maybe something happened to your home there could be any number of things that happen suddenly you are completely unable to pay the bills and of course this has disastrous effects this has been happening not just to a few Americans but so many people today. It's only getting worse. This is where all the information comes from. As always, I give you the actual documents itself. This is out of Gallup. That was a survey that they had done to pull up that data. I wanted to give you the source of it in case you wanted to see it. I always try to bring you the actual source of the data instead of just showing you something that's third or fourth hand. I try to get you as close to the source as possible. Two things from here. Federal spending hits highest level since the bank bailout and the stimulus. So you can see that out of CNS News. Where we are at today, this is so far looking at this and it has actually almost, almost got up to that moment where we saw with the whole TARP bailouts and everything else, most ridiculous spending the world has ever seen. And yet here we are almost at the same point. Now on average, of course, this has been going only in one direction and that is up. For the foreseeable future, it's just going to rise. There's no turning back from that. Of course, if there was some actual reduction in the amount of debt and the amount of deficits, well then we would have a very big problem. The entire system would collapse. At the very bottom, it says, while spending has gone up this year, federal tax receipts have declined. And that is a big issue, even though we've had all of the stimulus coming from the federal government, as well as other programs that have been run throughout the years, not able to make ends meet. That's what's happening here. The government looks a lot like the people and the people look a lot like the government and unfortunately things are getting worse despite all of the positivity we have seen about the Dow Jones and the S&P 500. We need to look past that. Bloomberg has these pages here and they call them graphics, but essentially it's like an interactive infographic and you just scroll through and there's so many different graphics throughout here. I'm gonna touch on a few points throughout this and I hope that you'll find it informative. At the very top, total world debt, it looks like it's about $250 trillion. There's no possible way that this will ever be paid back by any of these governments. The central banks are profiting the entire time. If we scroll down and look at the different countries, you can see the difference between the 2007 total debts. I'll show you that first. And you're looking at the US obviously occupying a big percentage of that. So just prior to the financial crisis, this is what the world looked like. And you can see China is much, much smaller on here. When you put your mouse over, it gives you a view into that. By the way, the link for this will be in the description. You could see China has surpassed $30 trillion as of 2018 their debt expansion has been nothing short of astronomical. So if I click on this 2018 total debt button, you could see how things change. It is a huge change. Obviously, everybody's getting into more debt. There's no doubt about that. When you look at it as a total number or as a percentage of the GDP, both of these are rising considerably. But just look at what happened with China as you see that they have truly expanded on a grand level. There's no doubt about that. 
U.S. household debt as a share of GDP. It has come down since the financial crisis. There's no doubt about it. However, if you look at it more specifically, I do believe that we're in a much worse shape today. And that's because of all of the student debt, credit cards, mortgages, and so on. People are in a state they cannot pay back. As far as I'm concerned, that's the way I look at the data. But when you want to look at specifically household debt as a share of GDP, yes, it has declined. There has been deleveraging, not because people wanted to but because they were forced to because they were going bankrupt total u.s household debt has risen slightly since 2007 it breaks it down into all the forms of debt obviously we have seen this grow people need to expand their debt that's the only way that they'll be able to actually buy anything on the right hand side you could see that student loans have expanded 186 percent throughout this period of time from 2007 to 2018 so basically in a decade this has grown so tremendously people aren't using those student loans necessarily just because they're going to college. We know that a lot of this money is being abused. That's been documented so many times before. We've all heard the story about the banks, the financial institutions. They had to deleverage. There was too much leverage in the system. Don't worry. They've taken care of that and they promise, 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 pinky swear. Well, you can look at this. Banks deleverage, but some remain larger than their country's GDP. You didn't deleverage. You expanded so far because these governments allow it to happen. This is not going to ever be resolved because these institutions control these governments. Look around, you can see the data for yourself, whether we're talking about in the US, for example, bottom left corner, JP Morgan is a considerable portion of the US GDP. Rise of the BBB company, S&P 500 companies by rating. You could see in yellow, that's the all BBB level. This is getting worse every year. I've talked about this, how these institutions, a lot of them are holding on to this BBB debt and it is very, very easy for them to need to sell. And the reason is that if they get downgraded one level, then they're officially into junk. Although BBB, as far as I'm concerned, is really junk. This is going to literally force them to sell it off. So that's going to create a tidal wave and I'm waiting for this to happen. Last but not least, corporates leading the way in China. Non-financial corporates have an excessive, absolutely excessive amount of debt today. This is considerably higher than what we would see in so many other countries. However, China has definitely been focusing on this. The financial sector, household and government also make up part of this $40 trillion total. I've been covering this issue for quite some time and we can see that this is only getting worse. It's only expanding. China, although the country is expanding we've seen many great things come out of there the amount of debt that they have the biggest public works projects the world has ever seen the stimulus measures quantitative easing and so many other things all end up with a big pile of debt that's eventually going to make up the global economic collapse when all countries together are flatlined. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a like on this video, you are supporting me, you're supporting the truth, and I do appreciate that very much. If you want the financial education you weren't taught in school, these two books have everything you need, all the way from the foundational principles, the history, the asset classes, and then how to make money, how to reduce your debt, and so much more. Check them out at the link if you want the audiobook that's available at themoneygps.com. If you want to find out about the 5,600 stores that are closing in the United States already this year in 2019, click on this video and I will see you there.